section here's some waves here's some waves i'm not going to slow down I'm just going to go straight through them Woo! love that How are you going? Can you complain about a day like today? I certainly can't. I'm having a good day today, and the reason I am, I'm on one of those boats, I'm on one of those boats that talk to you. Not every boat does this. I'm on a boat that, nice day, average day, terrible day, it speaks to you. It's like, come on, Dan, you know I'm easy to use. You know you're gonna have a good time. Doesn't matter what the weather conditions are like. Let's go boating, no excuses. And many boats that we sell, you can't say the same for that. They're quite complicated. They bash around in some conditions. They're not user friendly. But this boat, this boat's an exception. You've heard about me talk about these before, but we haven't had too many of the Axapar 24s on our books. They have been quite tightly held and we're lucky enough to be able to represent one this time around. The owners have, unfortunately enough for them, moved overseas. Um, so today, yeah, we're on a 2017 model Axapar 24 T-top. Dan Jones is my name. I'm from the Boat Brokerage. We're going to do a bit of a walkthrough. So, starting at the back of the boat, the 24 um, was for a time the smallest boat in their range. It has since been superseded by a new 22. Um, very hard to get uh, what I hear by all accounts. And the 24 was unique uh, in such that it was not a center console. It was a center walkthrough. So you benefit from this super beamy cabin area, an extra wide T-top, so much sun protection that it wasn't available with the forward um, sunshade as an option. It's arguable whether you would actually need that. I have seen some people just popping up umbrellas in summer or not using it at all because you have all this area instead. Um, but yeah, as I said, coming back to the back of the boat, we'll quickly walk your way around. We're on the port side here, so you've got the fuel intake. On either side, we've got uh, fender lockers. I've got three fenders in there and you've got your manual bilge pump just there. Flagpole holder there, cleat. Decent transom steps just here plenty of space and a unique design feature. As always, they make super great use of all the available space on these boats. Um, this is a, a great area for boat hooks, boat hooks, brooms. You can see I've got a couple of the boats lines in there uh, because I wanted to keep these ones full of fenders. That works quite well as it is. The engine will fully trim up and out of the water on this model, so you can store it in the water for long periods of time or permanently. Um, and this one's a 250 horsepower Verado. Uh, we'll take it for a spin in a second. You'll see how this baby goes. Um, the layout, both forward seats will swivel aft and face the three aft seats. And then there is a removable teak fold out a rectangular shaped lunch table. I'll have a quick squeeze of that on the way through. So this can be a great lunch option um, in addition to the one in the bow. Now on the starboard side, we've got a, a three step swim ladder. That is a telescopic swim ladder that just comes out from the starboard side there. And then we have mirroring the port side. We have another fender locker. However, this one's got the uh, swim shower, which just pulls out as cold water and forward of that, we've got the VHF aerial. Like all Axapars and many boats from the Scandinavian region, in fairness, it's got a full wraparound fender going all the way around the boat. Um, so that just gives you that flexibility when you're bumping in and out of docks and you don't trust your ability to keep it secure. Um, moving forward, we've got the switch panel and the batteries, uh, engine and house battery on this one. And the batteries are, are mid-mounted on the 24. I'll actually uh, spin this seat and give you a look in here. So batteries are mid-mounted on this hatch. We'll open that in a second. And um, we have the fridge 
pull out ISO therm fridge just there. And underneath this aft seat, that is our lunch table that I was talking about before. I'm just gonna fiddle with my camera gimbal here so I can get a better shot for you. Okay, yeah, that is our, that's a teak lunch table just there. And underneath we have more storage just here. The owner's just got some bottles of water and bits and pieces, and then you've got a uh, fire extinguisher just there. So that's where the lunch table would be mounted to. And then if you want to get into the battery box, you just got a couple of switches here, or not switches, latches, I should say. And this baby opens up. It actually, that middle seat will uh, swivel up um, so it doesn't hit, so I won't go all the way, but that just gives you a look into the battery location just there and just lock that back down okay now moving forward um, both sides you have a little knick-knack shelf storage so that's good for phones that's good for coffee cups um, this is good for more bits and pieces in here we've got a 12 volt uh, storage, uh, not storage, 12 volt charger just here. Fusion, which Bluetooths to your phones. This is the big upgraded pack because we do have the um, subwoofer boom boom just there. And here's the VHF, uh, that's a Garmin VHF. Um, that's got the emergency DSC, so you can plug that into the Garmin plotter if you've got a VHF uh, license. Um, this is supposed to angle up, but it doesn't because the hinge there has been broken. But uh, this is just a cold water sink, so that's somewhere to throw your drinks and uh, make your cocktails throughout the day. I would possibly just chuck that out, or obviously you just get a new hinge from uh, EOPS, the dealers. Um, get that sent over if you so chose. Um, driver's seat moves forward, aft, spins around, and the flip up bolster just flips up here. Uh, again, we've got the coffee cup, the knickknacks, and the storage here. You can see I've got a few bits and pieces here. And the helm, the helm's great uh, on these boats. So it's comfortable. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a look. Here you go. So um, it, it's a possibly one of the most ergonomic helms for a boat in this category and for axopars. You, you naturally just rest your arm here, you're straight onto the throttle, your left hand onto the wheel, the wheel is adjustable and you've got all your controls uh, with an easy uh, you know, line of sight just there and um, out of your visibility of the bow. So there, the sight line of the controls is below the bow, so visibility is never interrupted. Um, everything you need, so you've got your engine diagnostics, we've got our GPS plotter here, boat systems, this is our uh, trim tab control, engine start stop, um, and then uh, digital electronic throttle, which we'll look at during the test drive. And even this is a nice place to rest your hand on a hot day and catch the air as you're going along. So that's cool. And moving forward, so yeah, this is this is a great multifunctional area for families. You, what you find, we've got two beds just here. I'm going to lie down in one just to give you a look because I'm five seven. Okay, so this is me, my feet touching the end now. So heaps of space. You can actually overnight on this boat, and, and lots of people do. Um, it's totally possible and it is, there isn't even an option on this uh, model to do an infill here which these particular owners uh, didn't choose um, but you could turn this all into one big day bed and it's nice um, it's a nice place to get out of the cold and have a sleep or just just sit out of the cold in winter time you might find people want to sit here rather than on the back seat if they want to stay out of the, of the cold or if you've got extra people you might have them leave the bow and sit here and then some other people on the back seat and it just works um, it, because their their position is going to be low and out of the driver's line of sight and still quite social um, so that step there that removes and there was an option for a dunny which would just slide out um, but this this particular owner didn't choose that because obviously that's a bit weird uh, going to the loo in front of everyone but apparently they do that in Scandinavia so good luck to them um, this hatch here opens by removing this step so that just comes out like so uh, and it's just a storage area um, great spot in my opinion for like a safety grab bag you just have it there out of the way but there's more storage areas which we'll see and you can see I have been lazy and I've left the safety gear here today and my bag and a few things so you're you're not wanting for space on this boat this hatch forward here that's just uh, to your sump sump box 
um, which uh, a lot of the water drains to and that just pumps out over the side. So moving forward, we've got a windscreen wiper just on starboard there. This is our bow lounge um, and it's obviously smaller than the other boats, but it's not bad. Yeah, that's cool. This is comfortable. Um, then you've got this seat here, perfectly comfortable. Got a grab hold, you do feel secure. These boats are just known for their driving ability, so you're not gonna get thrown or ejected out of the bow going through a wave on this style of boat, because it's gonna cut through rather than launch over. Uh, but just to show you what we have here, um, it's just manual anchoring on this boat. You don't need a, a huge amount of chain. It's not a heavy boat. So we just got probably four meters of chain then to rope on this one. And what that means is, you know, I've just been uh, doing some drone shots and I dropped the drone pilot off at the wharf and you just nose in there, bump it up on the dock. They can step off, offload their gear with an ease and everything's doable. So you do have more storage under here. You can see I've got the boat's covers in here, but underneath these covers, there is actually a lunch table. So here and here, the two legs just go, and same as you would see on the 28 axopars, there is a lunch table with a teak finish, same as on the aft platforms, which go uh, here. And this area is good for, you know, three big blokes or four normal people, uh, and you'll be, you know, perfectly comfortable. But in the sun, hence my other point, with all this extra shade of the T-top, you don't necessarily need to be up here. Now, just looking below my feet, more storage, okay? So you can see the hydraulic, that looks like the hydraulic actuator for the steering, I think. Uh, this is where the owners have decided to keep the safety grab bag. The water tank is a bladder tank on these 24, so that's underneath there. Um, but that's, yeah, just another storage area. We do have the courtesy lights, so they're a cool blue. Um, and the windscreen closes, which we'll see in a second. This T-top is a new T-top. The original ones were a 3D, um, a 3D old material from North Sales. Looked super awesome, but it kind of shits itself after a few years in the Aussie sun. So you do have to replace them. This was done with the genuine material um, uh, from Axapar, I believe. Oh no, actually they might have actually upgraded it to something a little bit more suitable for Aussie conditions from memory. That was done in Mossman, yeah. So, okay. I think we need to go for a drive. Uh, have I forgotten anything? Well, you'll obviously leave a comment in the description below if I have. Um, these lights just here uh, could do with changing the surrounds. They are LED lights. That's a super easy fix, but they are showing their age just there. So that's something that the boat could do with. Um, I've got the engine batteries switches on, engine is down. And because I've got the key set to on, I can actually just do Boom, there you go. Love these Verados. So you can check that she's pumping by just seeing the water going out on the starboard side. And I'll just put this step back in place. Actually, I'll just put it here. Just, it's got one hand. That's locked down. Just done it. Lazy secure on the mooring there. Someone's mooring, thank you very much. Gotta say, with winter on its way, this weather is cracking. I'll just back up out of here. So, like the 28 Axapar, these 24 Axapars are absolutely a single operator vessel. You do not need to be going out with a large crew. Uh, I, I wasn't joking, these boats talk to you. You know, you'll just see the weather forecast or the sun will come shining through the windows or not sun and you'll just be like, oh my God, I want to go boating. And that's, that's what you can achieve on these boats because you're just not limited. Alrighty, let's stick this doobie whacker on, make sure that's filming. Yep, okay. Time to go for a drive. Need my sunnies. So 250 horsepower Verado, um, this is a six cylinder and she was serviced, um, next service, just a second, is 20, in uh, due at November 2021, so when the next service is due, she's sitting on approximately 
135 hours when I checked. Um, and what we're gonna do, is take her through the motions. So, uh, if you're not familiar with the beauty of outboard engines and the convenience, um, I'm not gonna tell you everything here in this video, that's, that's a whole nother video, but they're fantastic, they're cheap, they're low maintenance compared to the old days of the inboards. Um, they're quiet, as you can hear, so holding a conversation, even with this wraparound glass, when on some boats you'd expect the sound to bounce and reverberate back through the cockpit, it doesn't, it's not the case on, on this 24. So you can have a few guests enjoying some sun here. You can have a, you know, some sun uh, afraid people sitting up the front and then me and the uh, passenger are going to, um, you know, go, be in and out of the sun as we drive. Um, but everyone can hold a conversation. Everyone's got varying degrees of protection. Um, the, all the people from here forward have got wind protection. Um, the people on the back here, um, the two side seats, not so much. And in the middle, yeah, a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a boat you can enjoy. Enjoy the conditions. Uh, okay, we're clear of Reef Beach. So what I'm gonna do, I'll quickly talk to you about the hull profile. Uh, and I would have covered this on videos before, so forgive me if I'm going over things you already know, but um, these Axopars are, are worth talking about. They are, there was already a few brands doing uh, these cutting bow, very deep V hull profiles, but Axopar brought it to the mainstream. They um, refined the design, perfected the air channels, and really um, got to the stage where these days, you know, when I stopped selling new boats, they were doing 700 boats a year, I'm sure. 2021, they're, they're doing even more. They've got a fantastic product, and, you know, they're such a well-known brand name now, people are hunting us out um, for Axapars, and I'm sure e yachts the dealers, are, are, are just uh, very happy with their performance because they, they are a boat, as I said, they talk to you, but it's all about the hull up. It's bottom up thinking with Axapar, as opposed to designing a flashy area that impresses you when the boat's sitting at rest at a boat show. With an Axapar, it impresses you when you're belting along at 25 knots through choppy seas and everybody's dry and comfortable and you haven't got any back injuries. Um, so what do we have? We've got 65 degrees of cutting knife edge bow, which is going to slice through the waves. Um, then that aggressive cutting action uh, tapers back to a very deep V of about 23 degrees at the transom and it carries it all the way to the back of the boat. There's no flat planing plate. So when the boat is running, it doesn't have a tendency to want to launch off the wave. It stays relatively level and maintains contact with the water pretty much at all times. So if you don't launch or if you don't leave the water, you're not going to have to crash back onto it again. So that's that's step number one. But if you do have lots of contact with the water, that equals drag. So you have to overcome that drag. And Axapar were clever by designing a hull with air channels, um, with air channels that can aerate the water, introduce bubbles underneath the water, and break that surface tension. Once you've broken that surface tension and you keep the boat's overall displacement low enough, as they have done, you get a fast little weapon. So let's check that out. Yo. So as you can see on the plane, I'm sitting at, I gave it about 4,900 revs to, to pop out onto the plane. And we're sitting at about 26 knots here, four and a half thousand revs. The boat's comfortable. I lost a little bit, of, little bit of visibility on initial acceleration, and then you regain it. You can absolutely stand up or flip the bolster up one uh, one section. Here's some waves. Here's some waves. I'm not going to slow down. I'm just going to go straight through them. Woo! Love that. 
So that's the boat speaking for itself. Here's a couple more waves. This is the uh, this is the ocean just out to the left. So we'll just steer out to sea a little bit, and you just watch with me what this boat can do. So. The axle, all the axle paths are capable of very high um, top speeds. Once you get into the 24, the whole length is still going to be a 24 foot boat. So it's don't think of this like the axle par 37 or bigger boats, which can belt along at much higher cruising speeds. It's not going to do that. It's still a 24 foot hull. Um, so you will cruise around at somewhere between your 24 to 28 knot cruising speed, you can go faster, but your wife won't like you. So just, just take it easy on the slower boat. You've still got um, displacement speeds and physical length of the boat to deal with. I'm just going through a couple of waves here. And you'll just have an enjoyable time. So day like today, you know, I'm picturing winter's coming. You want to go whale watching? How long was that since we left Reef Beach in Manly? In two minutes, we would be offshore looking at whales. And then 20 minutes after that, when you've seen four or five whales, you're going to be ready for a hamburger. Like, this is what's so cool about this style of what I'm going to call adventure boating. And I believe this is a genre, yes, it existed before Axapar, but Axapar brought it to the mainstream. And now there's lots of brands popping up which is exciting and I think they should consider that a compliment uh, for what a great job they've done and people are discovering a new way of boating like you know I don't have to be restricted I can just go out whenever the hell I want to because the conditions are no longer my limiting factor Woo! this never gets boring okay just gonna give it some juice now we're going downwind Hopefully all my cushions are in place. I did check them before, I'm not that silly. And just giving it full noise, going through some waves, and 33 knots there. So my hat's still in place. And the boat's tracking really nicely. 33, 34 knots. Uh, the boat was anti-fouled in November of last year, so you probably get about 35 knots. And we'll just hook in here, go around these power boats. So I've done no engine trim up during this drive because the hull really is looking after us. You can do engine trim up in flat water couple of degrees to refine the boat. Look at these waves. Hopefully you're getting this on the camera. I'll hold it up. You can do engine trim up just to get that extra knot or two out of a boat like this. And so, yeah, sure. Freshy anti power, fresh service, clean bum. You'll probably get 40 knots out of one of these, um, but they are not going to be as fast as the 37 axle par or any, you know, not many 24 foot boats of this style that give you these performance parameters anyway so you it's still impressive you're still going to have fun so now i'm going to actually hook it in here i'll get out of this swell just do a little bit of trim tab down hook over drive no cavitation so she's just gripping i've just put her into the turn and she's just doing it Get away from the four knot zone as you can see. Skirting that one a little bit close and head back out to sea. So hopefully, hopefully this gives you a bit of a feeling for what you can achieve with one of these babies. Think differently. Don't factor in so much time. Don't think about the amount of limitations you've had on previous boats because you don't have them on one of these anymore. You can do more with less time and entertain and you will come back with a bigger smile on your face. Um, I'm gonna head back. I think I've run out of words, so 
That's all I've got to say. If you've got any questions, feel free to get in touch. All the information is on our website. These boats don't last for sale for very long. So I would suggest you to head straight to our website. The link is in the description below. And if the boat is still available for sale at the time of you watching this video, we'd be very happy to show you over. And if you are across closed borders, no worries, most people are these days. We can do everything by video. We're pretty good at trucking these boats these days and managing that whole process. So we're here to help. My name's Dan Jones. This is The Boat Brokerage. See you on the next one.